All right. Uh, we've been talking about New York real estate, oddly enough, on this show a little bit. Now we're going to talk about, I guess, Moscow real estate. Here's Tucker Carlson explaining to Chris Cuomo how overseas the architecture is better, which reflects uh, a deeper commitment to humanity on the part of cultures that design their buildings with an artistic human touch. And if you think that went over Chris Cuomo's head, you're probably right. He doesn't talk much in he, this clip. He, he, he's such a fucking meatball, man. He's staring he's at him like, like, yeah. Hmm, did I remember to put the Schwoyadel in the refrigerator, <laughs> or is it going to go bad? Well, uh, I got to check on that when I get home. Uh, here's Tucker Carlson. The public spaces are beautiful. The architecture has not been degraded by postmodern, the oppression of postmodern architecture, which is designed to, to demoralize and hurt you and destroy your spirit. I believe that because it's true. Do you believe that postmodern architecture is designed to kill your spirit? Of course. It was my understanding well, look, there was to anything be that we goal. make with our hands it's <laughs> chris Cuomo was like man 40 years ago i'd have given you a hell of a wedgie for saying that yeah <laughs> too bad we aren't on a schoolyard too bad Just we're all for saying postmodernism. <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's the purest expression of our creativity so there's a purpose behind everything that we make there's a message behind all of it as there is in all art you don't paint a painting with no vision behind it you paint a painting because you're saying something and so buildings that are warm and human and that elevate the human spirit are pro-human. And brutalism, for example, or the IMP glass boxes that crowd every city in the United States, those are not elevating. What's the message of working in a cube in a room with a synthetic drop ceiling and drywall on the walls and fluorescent lighting ahead of you and no privacy at all? What's the message? The message is really clear. You mean nothing. You are replaceable. You are a widget in a bin awaiting assembly. You're just a cog in a machine. You have no value. And everyone kind of ignores this like, oh, well, that's the way buildings have always been. No, that's not true. And architecture and anything made by human hands is the purest expression of the society that produced it. So we were like, oh, they're handicrafts. No, they're not handicrafts. They're a visible and tangible sign of who you are, not just as a person, but corporately as a society. And if you live in a place that creates nothing beautiful and doesn't provide people uplifting buildings to live and work in, that's a very sick and dark society. And it wasn't always that way. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think he's right. I've never met an interesting person that lives in one of these very modern box apartments with the floor to ceiling windows and the uncomfortable furniture. Um. Oh, there's a, what's his name? I this just came to my mind. It, it, River it's Page. Like, it's like the apartment everyone in a rom com lives in. Exactly that kind of thing. Just very sterile, very plain. River Page. Uh, I should have pulled this article, but he wrote it so long ago. He's a blogger. Uh, he's got a great sense of humor. He wrote a, a good piece about the sort of banal artistic and stylistic taste of the very people that Tucker is talking about who would live in an apartment mm -hmm. like that. He says, if you go into one of these people's apartments, the walls will be white, but they won't yep. call it white. They'll call it Chantilly Lace. They'll call it mm -hmm. Jasmine, even though it's just white, right? <laughs> like that's, that's, their, that's their taste, is coming up with interesting words to describe very boring uh, and sort of inhuman, soulless things and it's true of residential spaces it's also true of commercial workspaces yeah. as he says there um i think that i i agree with everything he's saying and and uh you know somebody who's done a series of videos about this who i don't agree with on a lot of things paul joseph watson has done some very good videos on modern architecture and modern art that basically approach it from this angle. I think what Watson misses and what Carlson misses also because of their ideological biases is um, this is not coming from some kind of amorphous state that, as they seem to want to see it as something that's coming from top down. It's a natural outgrowth of the premises of neoliberal capitalism. Um, one, the uniformity comes out of mass production and mass society. When they started dealing with larger populations, the capitalist imperative to keep things cheap. Why get stonemasons for the peasants? Why, what do you need to beautify things in that way? When you're oriented around church 
and state where you really want to communicate to a largely illiterate population the grandeur of those institutions, well, yes, you want that architecture to communicate the glories and the and the ideas behind the state and the church. Um, when you're just promoting capital, you, you're not, what, so how do you do that? You just throw money at it, but it doesn't have any core philosophical heft. There's nothing really behind it. Um, so that's part of the uniformity. Now, some of what he's talking about is what's often referred to as starkitecture. Now, that's not because it's stark. The star part is you hire somebody like Frank Gehry, who has this name, because then you can sell these apartments for an outrageous markup to the kind of person who wants to say they live in a Frank Gehry building, which, as you say, is the most boring person imaginable. But part right. of this, part of this, the sterility that he's describing, it's partly that mass produced quality for a mass population. It's also a lack of a guiding philosophy or value system. Now, a value system doesn't have to be good to inspire. It just has to be. I don't, I don't think very many of us would want to adhere to, say, Egyptian philosophy. But it drove them to create the pyramids. That was a reflection of that. It, they were inspired to do that. When you have a society with no beliefs other than shopping, you wind up with the Oculus. The exactly. Oculus is probably the most significant civic architecture built in new york in decades that's you might you may have seen it even if you've never been here it's the winged it looks like wings white building that's at the 9 11 memorial site it's being used in a lot of movies if you ever saw john wick 2 they have a big shootout in the oculus at the beginning of the movie um now if you look at that and you compare it to grand civic architecture of the past rockefeller center uh, the Grand Central Terminal, the yes. New York Public Library, um, they all have these references to classical mythology. Now, at that time, why would you do that? Because if you went to Harvard, you got what they called a classical education. So you were familiar with the meaning of these symbols. And if you were a schoolboy, there were no comic books. That was comic books. You read the Odyssey. You read the Trojan War. You read the Iliad. Um, so it was a common vocabulary. So when you saw Hercules, everybody knew what that meant. There was a, there was a common understanding of what that was meant to represent. Our common culture today is consumerism. So if you go inside the Oculus, which is supposed to represent the rebirth of the area, that's why it has the wings, very shallow symbolism. In my opinion, you go inside, it's a fucking mall. It's an Apple store. It's a Donna Koran. It's it's there's nothing, but and there's then, nothing really in it. It's it's no, very spare. No. It's very no, minimal. It's just this big open marble space. Um, and, and that's at best when you look at the style of architecture at best. Sometimes they'll do some things with the the way they structure the space that can be visually striking. But it doesn't mean anything. There's no meaning behind it. It's just when they had to think about, well, what would be a common uniting thing for people to do in this building? Shopping. It's what they came up with. Exactly. Exactly. And at a certain point, capitalism creates its own culture. It's a culture that reflects back right. your capital, right? right. The right. the degree to which you have ascended within the system, which is all you're trying right. to signal through the right. expression of whatever space you occupy, whether it's where you live or where you work, right? Sending that signal becomes most important because the culture exactly. has been completely consumed by that motivation. And that's largely what has happened to not just New York, but especially New York, especially New York. And maybe especially. that's just I notice it more because I live in no, and around No, no, it's New because York. of the concentration of capital. Here. Yes, it is especially New York. And because it's not spread out like Los Angeles, everything's packed in. It's all about buildings. Buildings are the natural landscape of New York. Even though you're, if you're in Manhattan, even though you're on an island, it doesn't feel like you're in a, on an island because you never see the water unless you live by it. You're just, right. you're just in those concrete canyons. That's all true. The time. Um, but another element that is very capitalist, if you look at these architecture buildings, no two of them are alike because there's no, 
they've completely broken the principle of form and function, right? Architecture has always been form and function combined. That's what we've considered great architecture. They threw out that unity of form and function because what they're really trying to do is branding. So right. the so the buildings have a sameness to them, but physically they're all very different. You don't have anything like the pediment and the columns. You don't have this repetitive motif, right? Because you're trying to make a Nike swoosh so that the people right. who buy an apartment in there right. can say, oh yeah, I'm in that building. And it's not like any other building, but it has nothing to do with function. Right, exactly. Please clap.